Hello, welcome to Apes Lecture Chapter 20, uh, Lecture Video Part 2, I believe. Now we are on bioenergy now. We just finished talking about nuclear energy, and now we're on bioenergy. Uh, these, the, this is considered a renewable form of energy, where nuclear energy was not renewable. There were some positives about nuclear energy. One of the main positives of nuclear energy is the fact that you're not releasing all those emissions. All right, so let's get into bioenergy now. These are alternatives to fossil fuels. What is bioenergy? Well, there's this thing called biomass, and that is living things that have grown, things like shrubs, trees, plants. A lot of you in front of your houses, when you have to take out the trash, you have a separate container for your plant material, things that you, yard clippings, things of that sort. So that stuff is all considered biomass. Living stuff that has been that has been collecting carbon by doing photosynthesis what carbon is it collecting it is collecting carbon dioxide from the air all right so biomass is plant matter for the most part and what do we do well we can derive energy from it in, in several different ways we'll talk about them shortly now in principle if we're using bioenergy it is generally renewable so long as you allow the plant matter to regrow. So let me give you an example. If you cut down a tree in your yard and there's no tree anymore, um, you are not being renewable. If you let the tree grow back, as the tree grows back, it will collect carbon again, carbon dioxide. So you, when you cut it down, you, you're going to be releasing carbon dioxide into the air. How? Through the decomposition of the matter. And if you burn it, you'll set it on fire and you'll release carbon dioxide back to the air that way. Um, when you let it grow, it pulls the carbon dioxide out of the air when it does photosynthesis. Um, and then that in return makes it carbon neutral. Um, so let's see. Where do we get a lot of this uh, biomass? Well, they're the bioenergy. A lot of it comes from wood, um, wood from trees mainly. Charcoal, okay, that counts as biomass. Residue, crop residue, stuff that we're not going to eat, we're not going to use for something directly. That's something that we can set on fire. Uh, from your houses, um, certain animal wastes you can set on fire. Those are considered biomass. All right. What do they do with these things? Well, if they can set them on fire, they can be used for heating in most places. If you can set it on fire and, and boil water, then you can use it to generate electricity. If you can collect the gas that's produced through decomposition called like landfill gas, and then that gas can then be burned. It can be turned into electricity that way. Um, most of it most of this stuff, biopower and, and generate electricity, it's going to lead to something that's going to have to be eventually burned. But it burning releases CO2, then you let you let it grow back. You, you let the livestock grow. You know, you let things come back to life. And when things come back to life, um, the plants regrow, you will be, and then you'll become carbon neutral and it becomes renewable. The whole key factor in biomass is allowing photosynthesis to continue on after you've removed it you so you remove a tree you gotta let it grow back that's really what it comes down to this takes place it's commonly used in rural regions or, or developing countries places where there's a lot of farming um, less development and places that are developing countries that are developing people are generally trying to heat their homes or trying to cook and they're trying to light their houses the primary uses of energy in case you don't know yes heating heating Okay, could come in the form of cooking or heating your house, electricity production, okay, and transportation uh, in our vehicles. Those are the primary uses of energy. Um, problem with biomass, if people get too excited, the tragedy of the commons can take place, meaning the commons or the forest gets deforested because everybody's cutting down trees because everybody needs fuel. When you remove trees, that leads to soil erosion. Remember back in our earlier chapters, uh, Earlier, some earlier quarter, um, desertification. Cut down too many trees, you get soil erosion, and it gets even more desertified. Things become a desert. What is biopower? Well, when you take these fuels and you turn them into heat or electricity, that is biopower. And biofuels is when you can liquefy some of these fuels. You can turn them into something like uh, ethanol, for example, and they can be used in a, in a car vehicle. 
All right. So what do we do? Well, we take biomass and we can turn it into electricity. Uh, you can take wastes or scraps from certain industries. You can take the gas, the methane. It's pretty much natural gas is produced by the decomposition or breakdown in landfills. So in landfills, when they break down, there's a lot of methane produced. If it gets released to the air, that's not good. Methane is a very strong greenhouse gas. Ideally, if you can collect it, and we have, we are starting to get better at it, you collect that biogas that forms in these landfills, and that gas can get burned and go into a facility and get burned and then turned into uh, electricity that way. So you're in, rather than releasing the air and let it go, you're going you're gonna to collect it and you're going to burn it and you're going to convert it into electricity. Now, to, for biomass, there are certain plant species are better. So we can actually try to cultivate these specific plant species. Bamboo, fescue is a type of grass, another grass, switchgrass. These things grow quickly. They grow so quickly that they would be good biomass uh, sources. You can, cult you can harvest them, um, use them, and then they can grow back seasonally and you can keep using them every year. Ideally, you got to do it. Uh, you got to do it in a certain way. You can't over, over, ex you can't over, um, basically cut down too many trees. They won't, they won't be able to renew themselves. So this is kind of what they do in forestry. You know, they only allow them to cut down so many trees or the forest would be gone. Um, what do they do to biomass? You set it on fire. You burn it or you combust it. Um, if you burn biomass with coal at the same time, which is commonly done in certain power plants, that's called co-firing. Um, that's used, once again, to heat water, to turn it into steam, to turn a turbine, to move magnets around a copper wire and generate electricity. Um, biopower is a good thing. Um, why? When you let things grow back, they can remove CO2 from the air, CO2 emissions, all right? Um, also, that landfill gas, methane getting released, that's a greenhouse gas. That's not a good, that's also a greenhouse gas along with carbon dioxide. So, you, and it's a worse greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. When you burn biopower, use biofuels, you are generally, other than coal, most of these fuel sources don't release sulfur dioxide. So plant matter doesn't, doesn't release that. When you burn coal, you release sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide leads to acid rain in case you forgot. Um, there is not hardly any sulfur in these plant products, so you're not releasing it. Um, what happens, what's a major disadvantage of doing, using biomass? Well, the soil naturally needs the decomposition of this plant matter to take place. It's kind of like what happens in a forest. When this decomposition takes place, that decomposition puts nutrients back into the soil, um, helping the plant. So if you just keep cutting down and removing trees and their, and, their, and their parts and all the shrubs, and you don't allow the decomposition to take place, you are removing the nu nutrients that the soil needs to maintain fertility. Um, so what do we do with a lot of this biomass or a lot of this plant matter? Well, if you grow a lot of corn, corn has a lot of starch in it. Starch has a lot of sugar in it. Sugar is a good starting material for this thing called fermentation. Fermentation leads to a byproduct. So it, the byproduct, one of the products of fermentation is ethanol. Okay, so alcohol fermentation produces ethanol. Well, ethanol is drinking alcohol, technically. Um, we do fermentation to produce, for example, beer or wine. Um, they add ethanol to gasoline. When you add ethanol to gasoline, the emissions aren't as bad. Ethanol burns cleaner than gasoline. Alcohols burn a little cleaner. They're a little purer than, than gasoline, that's for sure. So they add ethanol commonly to gasoline. So your car, the, car, the gas in our cars has ethanol in it. Uh, it'd be nice if the cars ran on pure ethanol. They, they burn a little cleaner, but it's, not, it's kind of expensive. It's not cheap to make ethanol, to, to do fermentation. There's a cost that goes into it. So the return on your investment isn't good. So that's why they don't necessarily add a lot of ethanol. There's these vehicles that are called flexible fuel vehicles. They operate on mostly ethanol, 85% ethanol. Think of it as reversed. Our cars are like 15% ethanol, where uh, a flex vehicle is going to be mostly ethanol. It's going to burn cleaner. They're trying to do this in places like Brazil. That's because Brazil generates a lot of ethanol. What do they do in Brazil? They're fermenting sugarcane. In the United States, we are fermenting corn, but in Brazil, they're fermenting sugarcane. So here's the problem in the U.S. 
this is showing you a picture of the U.S. And this is the area of corn grown in the U.S. currently. And we grow a good amount of corn in the U.S. That's a lot of space if you think about it because we're growing other things here also. And we have um, ranches. We have animals. We have a lot of things we're doing in the agricultural industry. Um, in order to produce ethanol at a rate in which we can have it you know, take the place of, for example, using all this gasoline, we would need to increase our, our acreage by four times. So we would be growing uh, a lot of corn in order to produce ethanol. Um, it's not necessarily an effective uh, way of dealing with things. There was a push many years ago, like 15 to 20 years ago, to move towards ethanol. And they realized that the, the return on your investment over time and at that time and in this time would not be good. There's just a massive amount of land that needs to be used to make it work. Um, so it's created problems. The automotive industry want, was try, thinking about shifting that direction, but it just didn't happen. Everything really comes down to dollars and cents. Biodiesel. So you can take vegetable oil or cooking grease or animal fat. And it's interesting. I have a story. When I was a kid, I actually, uh, in my neighborhood, I knew somebody who had a car called a Volkswagen Thing. And the Volkswagen thing ran on biodiesel. What does that mean? This neighbor of mine would go to the restaurants in the area and collect grease from their grease traps. It was disgusting. Grease from a grease trap is disgusting. He would filter it through cheesecloth so that he can get all the food particles out of it. This is a true story. Then he would take that and what, and he would filter it through several times because of all the food scraps that end up in a grease trap. It's pretty gross. It's like sludge from old food particles. Then in the end, he'd have a mix of cooking grease and vegetable oil that he would end up putting inside of his uh, in his car. His car would then run on biodiesel. It was really interesting. Um, not many cars I've heard of can do this. It requires a certain type of engine. I believe older Volkswagens in particular were uh, one of the few vehicles at that time and probably even today that could be converted easily into a biodiesel vehicle. Um, well, they have less emissions, so you're taking advantage of this oil that's got to be discarded anyway. Um, um, their fuel economy is similar to a regular car running on gasoline. It's cost effective in my friend's case, well, not my friend, my neighbor, my neighbor's case, uh, he, he was getting grease for free. Um, it's non-toxic and biodegradable because you're generally talking about a plant oil of some sort that's produced by a plant that wasn't produced by a fossil fuel. Um, and it, like I said, it can be sourced from food products, food waste. Very interesting thing happening, and it's and it's happening right now. And, and many years ago, we actually had a guest speaker on it. Um, is is the the use of an organism to produce your your actual fuel so what does that mean well we know about this thing called photosynthesis where light is used to synthesize to make organic stuff sugar is not the only thing made in photosynthesis it's one of the primary things made but during photosynthesis uh something that a uh, photosynthesizing organism can produce oils so what they've done over time is they've genetically engineered algae to produce fuels for us and how basically they they've genetically modified them to to take in sunlight okay because they're green take in sunlight and carbon dioxide from the air all right so they absorb sunlight for energy carbon dioxide from the air and then they fix that carbon dioxide and convert it into something organic in this case they can convert it into an organic product like an oil or a biodiesel something that we can use as a fuel source it's it's really cool. It's 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 really nice technology. Places they're doing it. In, I've heard in Arizona. I've we I've talked to a student from UCSD, and they ended up they were a guest speaker of mine, and they got hired by a company, and they were living out in Arizona. Why in Arizona? Well, probably in areas where they have a lot of sun available to them. So you pretty much genetically you you give them the nutrients that you need you want to give them so they can flourish and grow and then you give them sun and carbon dioxide and then, then they will produce in this case you can purify out the oils that they produce um what are they doing a lot of places in places like germany right now they're dealing with um cellulosic ethanol so cellulose is plant fiber this is um a part of a plant that's very hard to digest that's why it's we call it fiber it goes through our system 
we cannot break it down. Certain organisms can, but a lot of them cannot. So what they're using is certain enzymes to break down cellulose. So cellulose is made out of simple sugars. So if you can break down cellulose with certain enzymes, you can convert them the cellulose into sugars, and then the sugars themselves can be fermented into al alcohol or ethanol in this case. It's just a, which type of plant would you use? Something like switchgrass, because it grows very quickly and very rapidly. Now, I've already talked about this um, earlier in this lecture, but we'll talk about it again. Is bioenergy carbon neutral? It is only carbon neutral and, and renewable so long as you allow the plant or the forest to grow back, regrow. And then when they regrow, what do they sequester? The carbon dioxide. They pull the carbon dioxide back out of the air. So burning them or fermenting them for example, will release carbon dioxide or decomposing them will release carbon dioxide to the air. When that happens, um, we have an outflux of carbon dioxide. When they regrow, we now have an influx of carbon dioxide back to the plant. Therefore, it becomes neutral at that point. All right, we'll stop there today.